maybe another two minutes before they shot down one of my ideas. And maybe they would give me a little more latitude. What happened after the Oscar? So then after that happened, uh, I had already made another movie that was in the can. But no one in town, uh, except for Jerry Bruckheimer, thought that I could do adventure films. And I shot The Rock with Sean Connery. <laughs> but I wanted to really try my hand at it. Again, the student in me wanted to see if I could play a Cameron Poe in Con Air, which is nobody. Is nobody <laughs> it was, again, a, a learning curve, a challenge. And it worked. It worked a little too well. And I kind of got stuck in that cycle. But, but uh, I'm. I'm now back doing my, my true passion in cinema, which is independently spirited dramas. And as you said, it was the period of the big blockbusters in your career with The Rock, with Con Air, Snake Eyes, 8 Million Eclipse. Everybody watch that film? Was it still learning? What did you find frustrating about doing these types of films or well, not? Well, what, it wasn't so much that it was frustrating. What I learned very quickly with that style of cinema was that you only have a very finite short amount of time to build a character before you cut to the car chase. So that's what I, I learned was how to how to come up with a character. For example, in The Rock, I made him a Beatle maniac. I said, okay, I want I want to have a scene where I, I I spent like six hundred bucks buying the vinyl Meet the Beatles album and, and have him bring it to me so we could establish that this character had some something about him, some idiosyncratic uh, behavior that made him interesting. Stanley Goodspeed. Yes. Um, Sean Connery, uh, you, 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 you mentioned John Malkovich. Did it allow you at least, you know, to, to, to co-star uh, alongside actors you admire? 